How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech. Now with the launch of the new Ryzen 3000 series CPUs, we also got the new X570 motherboards to support the latest AM4 processors. So ASUS of Africa sent over their X570E ROG Strix board for me to take a look at and see how it performs. To all my South African viewers, you can stand a chance to win some awesome products from ASUS when purchasing any of their X570 motherboards. You can win items like a new 144Hz gaming monitor, an ROG Centurion, a Spatha mouse or even one of their new all-in-one coolers. All you need to do is send your proof of purchase to the mail linked below with the competition ending on the 20th of August. So now is the time to upgrade to X570 with ASUS. The new Strix X570e is one of ASUS's high-end boards to support Ryzen 3000. It does have higher components compared to some of the other boards, but that does also add a bit of a higher price tag because of that. With this board retailing for around $330 on Amazon or 7,800 Rand here in South Africa. So then starting off with the design of the new X570e board, you do get this really gorgeous black and gray color scheme with some RGB on the IO cover and then also between the PCI Express slots. With these, you can of course control all of the lighting and play around with the best lighting effects for your setup. Along with that, you do also get a two 12 volt RGB headers and then two five volt addressable RGB headers if you wanted to connect some other RGB light strips or RGB fans onto the board. Also, even though you're not really gonna see it, but at the back of the board, you do get this really cool black text that is in a few different languages as well. It just adds a little bit more to the board and it makes me kind of a bit more excited to check it out. Now, like I mentioned before, the X570 does support the AM4 socket, so you can use any of the first or second generation Ryzen CPUs on this board, except for some of the first generation APUs. Those ones for some reason doesn't work. Also, you don't need to do any BIOS updates if you are going to use a previous generation Ryzen CPUs, it's going to support them right out of the box. Now, because of the more higher end board, you're most likely gonna use this one with some higher end Ryzen CPUs, like the Ryzen 3700 ranging to the Ryzen 3900X. But of course you can use it with some other CPUs, like currently I have the Ryzen 5 3600X on the board and it does work perfectly for that. But now speaking of the higher components, the X570e does have a very good VRM setup with some nice large heat spreaders with an 8mm cooling pipe for better temperatures between the north and the west MOSFETs. For the VRM setup, you get an 8 high and 8 low side fetch with 16 chokes that is each tied to the Infineon POWI R3555M 50 amp MOSFET in a 12 plus a 4 arrangement. They do have an operation temperature up to 125 degrees, but from my use with my 3600X, which are again overclocked, it never went above 80 degrees. But of course, if you're gonna use a higher end CPU, it is going to up the temps a bit more, but with the cooling solution, your temperatures should be completely fine. Moving on to the memory, you get a four dual channel DIMMs that support up to 128 gigs of DDR4 memory running at 4400 MHz on the Ryzen 3000. Then of course, we do also get the new PCI Express 4.0 connections that delivers double the available bandwidth compared to PCI Express 3.0. Now currently only the latest PCI Express 4.0 NVMe SSDs really utilizes that jump in a bandwidth getting up to a crazy 15 gigabytes per second in reads and writes but however graphics cards are not entirely there yet. 
However, with the X570e supporting PCI Express 4.0, you are getting future proofed with two PCI Express 4.0 x16 slots with a SUSE safe slot technology. Get one PCI Express 4.0 16x slot running at 4x times speed, and then two PCI Express 4.0 x1 slots for some additional cards. Also, if you wanted to run SLI or Crossfire, this board does support both. Now, just something to mention that the bottom full-time slot and the bottom one-time slot does share a bandwidth, so you'll only be able to use one at a time. Now, as for those super fast SSDs, the X570e does have a two M.2 PCI Express 4.0 slots that support up to the extra longer 22-110 size M.2s. Both slots does a feature aluminum heat spreaders to help cool the SSDs because those new PCI Express 4.0 ones does get quite a bit hot. Along with that, you do also get the slower but still useful SATA ports. But unlike some of the other X570 boards, the E has eight of them, so you're not compromising on the storage. But now because of the new PCI Express 4.0 delivering so much more bandwidth, the X570 boards does require a bit more cooling for the PSH chipset. So instead of just adding a plain passive heat spreader, ASUS added a dedicated fan to help keep temps in check. Now currently I don't have any of those PCI Express 4.0 SSDs to really push it to the max to see how the temperatures perform. but I'm sure that these boards will be able to handle them, especially with the extra cooling. Also, just to mention, this cover that is covering up the fan, it's plastic and not aluminum, so unfortunately it doesn't add to extra cooling, so yeah. Then moving on to I.O., you do get the awesome pre-installed I.O. shield, so you're not going to forget to install that if you are building your system. You do also get a BIOS flashback button that you can use to update your BIOS with only a USB. You don't need to install a CPU first. Next, you do also get HDMI 2.0 and a DisplayPort 1.2 port for your APUs, 7 USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A ports and 1 Type C port, and then you do also get the Realtek RTL 8125CG 2.5 GHz, and along with that, you do also get an additional Intel L211 AT1 Gigabit Ethernet port for optimal speeds, both of them are featuring anti-surge LandGuard and then also ROG a game first. Moving on to wireless connectivity, you do get the Intel Wi-Fi 6 AX200 that also includes a Bluetooth 5. Lastly, for audio, you do get the Super FX S1220A codec for better sound quality and also a bunch of Sonic software to improve your audio experience. Then for power, the X570e does have the standard 24 pin for your motherboard power and then an 8 plus 4 pin for your CPU. You can run it only with a single 8 pin, but if you are going to use higher end CPUs and especially if you're going to overclock, you will need to add that extra 4 pin to get the additional power out of it. Then just some additional features and connections you get on the board. You do get the Q code and the Q LEDs to let you know what's going wrong if your system doesn't want to post. You do also get 7 PWM fan connections, 2 USB 2.0 connections, one USB 3.2 Gen 2 10 gigabits per second connection, and then one USB 3.2 Gen 1 5 gigabit connection. Then finally, I did also run some CPU benchmarks with the Ryzen 5 3600X using Precision Boost Overdrive, which added my CPU clock speeds to around 4.1 gigahertz. Unfortunately, it's not a 3900X to get that ultimate performance out of the board because this board is more opted for that kind of CPU. But the 6 core 12 thread CPU did do quite well, especially just with a nice quick single button overclock. So then that's pretty much it for my look at the ROG Strix X570e board. A big thanks to ASUS of Africa for sending this board over for review. If you want to get one for yourself, I will leave links in the video description where you can get them. 
And also remember, if you do purchase an X570 uh, board from ASUS, you do stand a chance to win some really epic uh, goodies. All you need to do is send your proof of payment to the email linked in the video description. Unfortunately, this is only for South Africans, which is probably cool. So definitely do that and you can win some really nice stuff. But that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe, and comment like always. And I will take all of you next time. Cheers, guys.